let's right welcome in the ring to each and every one of you folks we trust that you are well we trust that you are good john jones belena klein wherever you're joining us from the hundreds of you who are joining us tonight mabel shocks inclusive welcome in the ring we got the fight card set it's only you guys are missing we're gonna hold a couple minutes because once we start there's no slowing down lots to share with you good folks tonight a lot a lot a lot of things to share with you guys so share the live, smash that emoji button for us, folks. Let me go down the road. Let me go down. Some of them swim out. The DPP run out. <laughs> Air fun swim out. A lot of them come out today, folks. A lot of things to discuss with you guys. Wherever you're joining us from, folks, pace and power. We're fired up, good folks. And we are ready to go. We are ready to go this end, guys. We trust that you guys are as well. What are you all doing? We all at. The technicians who are on duty, do let us know if you're hearing us loud and clear. Do let us know if you're hearing us loud and clear, you good folks out there, wherever you're joining us from tonight. The DPP run out, air fun swim out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Even Jerry Govaya, well, he hop out. He hop out. We can talk with all them tonight. We got him in the ring, folks. We got him in the ring. Let's fight. If you guys are ready, you Utilin, Utilin, Alicia. Good to have you. Well, not usually at least. What am I called? Usually in Pinder, rather. Alicia. Yeah, there's the other person. Ariel Abrams and all the other folks joining us this evening. We are happy, delighted that you folks have joined us. Wherever you're joining us from, wherever you're up and coming from tonight, folks, we are happy that you're good. We are happy that you are well. Peace and power, guys. Share the live. Eloise Amsterdam, Melissa Monroe. Good to have you. Rashley Ford is here as well. Arely Abrams, good to have you. Vesta Hardy Rajkumar is here too. Good to have each and every one of you on the live. Joylin Cook, Roshana James is here as well, guys. We're privileged to have each and every one of you. Where are you joining us from tonight, folks? Rock and come in. Swim and come in. Flick, roll and come in. But folks, come in. Come in. Come in. Once you come in, we good to go. We good to go. Back yourself up. Some of the folks are going to back yourself up tonight. Simone Broom's voice, back yourself up, good folks. Elizabeth and Sheena Hazel, Robert King. Very good evening to each and every one of you. Wherever you're joining us from, we got a lot to get through tonight, folks. So we don't have any time to waste at all, at all, at all. We got to fight cat set. You know the whole thing. We know the whole thing, folks. We know the whole thing. That's what we're telling you. We know the whole thing. Roxanne Garry with Glenford Gordon. We know the whole thing. Oh, you all be like Glenford, the man. Uh, be like some of these other folks who say, I don't share. I've been waiting. I don't share. Be like some of these folks, eh, man. Operate like big people, eh, man. I see Kosher. We see you there. Wilmer Grant, we see you there. Andrew Cosbert, we see you there. Eva Juna, we see you there. Barbara Ralph, Wanda Fraser, we see you there as well. Dorica Ferguson, Valmeo Wilson, Lisa Remy, Myrna Stoby, Edward Brooms, folks. <laughs> Y'all show up. Good to have each and every one of you on the live. Osman Lavrick, Lurik, good to have you on the live. Look at some of the things we're covering tonight, folks. West Indies, back in the news. Is Netherlands the play? <laughs> oh, oh, folks, we got some things to talk about West Indies. As we said, as we said, the DPP run out, Director of Public Prosecution, Shemar Ali Hack. Hack. She run out. <laughs> Well, you all know. You all know this one. He catfish. He swim out. He swim out. <laughs> the roll out. <laughs> the major general. The roll out, folks. They're trying with people in Pleasance. They're trying with the vendors in Pleasance. Oh, the roll out, the Joe Singh. They roll out the major general, rather. They roll out the major general, good folks. Some of the things we're covering at. Some of the things we're covering at our end, folks. Some of the things we're covering at our end tonight. Stacey and Sue, Karen Mohammed, good to have you there. Uh, uh, Laverick, Osman Laverick, good to have you here as well. Christina Zor is here. I see Carol, Caroline Hurt, Hank Zen, good to have you. Ingrid, Ingrid Austin, good to have you. Ingrid, speaking truth to power, is here as well. I love these Facebook names. So my just Facebook user, Keith, is here as well. Keith Dowding. Uh, Adil Beckles is here. Simone Adiola Jackson is here as well. Folks, good to have each and every one of you. Donna Pillow is here too. Ferdinand, good to have you, Ferdinand. All the other folks joining us, folks, share the live. 
smash that emoji button for us good folks and come let me go down the road we got a lot of ground to cover this evening folks so come let us go down the road please and thank you come let me go down the road we got a we got a lot of ground to cover tonight good folks a lot a lot of ground to cover tonight so we don't have any time to waste no time to waste no time to lose come let me go down swim out hop out roll out run out flick out but rock and come in wherever you're joining us from folks we got a lot of ground to cover and if you guys know our program you know we're going from here you know we're going we got the opener we got the opener set folks we're in that chapter we're in the run run the garden ingrid king patricia graves andy goodman delon benjamin is here too facebook user good to see you sharon more curious we see you as well wherever you're joining us from tonight folks we got the opener set there's only some of y'all missing is only some of you missing share the damn life smash that emoji but we right here folks we right here we ain't going nowhere yet and we ain't going nowhere no time soon they're trying all kinds of things to distract you they don't want you focus on this issue they don't want us to focus on this issue we hold no focus we hold no focus right here because we got too many things too many things to talk about we hold no focus right here wicked stink and dirty folks Today is yet another day on the protest line, and this time in front of the office of the director of public prosecution. The office, we ain't concerned too much about the office holder. It's the office. Folks were out there protesting the office. The office holder, Shalima Ali, hack, hack. Let me sway back there. Bring it up. Hack. Yep, 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 yep. What's taking them so long? What's taking them so long? You know the Karasa by dormitory fire. They don't charge them boys in a short space of time. Charge done laid. I think less than 40 hours since last week. DP got his case jacket. So she waiting. In her own deliberate judgment, at the appropriate time, she can flick out. Hmm? She can flick out. We can't wait so long, folks. Justice too long delayed. The great civil rights leader. Dr. Martin Luther King said, it's justice delight. Justice too long delayed. It's justice delight. Folks, we caught up with one and only former minister of government, Simone Brooms, on the protest today outside the DPP's office. She had a couple of things to say. Simone Brooms had a couple of things to say, good folks. Yep, she had a lot to say. Take a look and take a listen. They open up, folks. Get the appetite. Open up the appetite for what is to come. Simone Brooms on the protest line today in front of the DPP's office. Take a look. Good folks, Dwayne McCallman, Isabella Butters, Cole Water. That's it. Cole Water, Sandra Hanover, Auntie Sandra. Good to have you there. Emily Scott, Judith David. Good to have you. Maureen Williams, Gladys Passat. Take a look. Take a listen. We're still on this issue, folks. We're still on the damn little rape scandal issue damning allegations made by that 16 year old if you're new to this program against the sitting minister folks sitting minister of local government and regional development we're on the protest line today outside of the dpp's office where that file has been handed over from the police waiting waiting the directions from the dpp how long shall we wait how long folks for minister simone brooms on the front line at that end. take a look and take a listen. Folks, it's another day. We are on the protest line. We are in front of the, uh, the, the, the director of public prosecution's office. And the protesters are having their say. Uh, charge him now. Darmilal must go. That is what they're saying. I want to thank the few of us. Beyond, we don't care. I don't care about the rain. We must come out here. We must stand up. And I want to thank the media for carrying this matter. Because you know what? For the PPP. This matter done, they don't carry on with nothing. One minute, two minutes, everybody disappear. We do as we feel, how we feel. This is unacceptable. And I'm calling on all Guyanese. All of us, move beyond your Facebook page. I'm saying we must mobilize massive against this action. This government is this, 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 this disgusting. Listen, I fed up with this period me. I fed up with these bastards. I am shame of listening to all these women who sit down behind here and pretending like you can't talk and coming for bold some hobbies. How could you rest with this on your mind? I would have never been a part and will never be a part of no government like this. Listen, if Darmlal didn't resign, I'd be gone. 
I would not sit silent. I hate the system. I work with young people. A young girl, listen, she talk about the young people struggle of this country and how you got to try to, to fight in a system that is not fair. The young lady herself, she expressed that. It is sad for young people. There's no hope. And I hate to see all these ministers and, and, and these men from the president right down in Garmin, all of them. When you go in these communities and villages and, and they're taking a photo and got these girls up under the arm, why are you touching them like that? Why are you touching them like that? Airfan ain't got no posture. This man ain't got class. No way in the world. Even how we hold them alone. You want to see the guy to resign even from a mayor in, the U in New York? Why are you holding our girls like that? Don't hold them like that in, in compromising position. And they post these things on, on, on their social media. And as if it's business as usual. Get your posture. This is, this is hard. And Darmla has sit on home and given instructions and order at the office. Persons from the, 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 his office calling and say, listen, this man like he more vicious now. You understand what I mean? And his tone, how he's dealing with them. All oh, these are allegations. There's a system that we don't trust. And you got this young girl and she's speaking from behind the walls. And say, listen, this is hard for me. I don't believe in the system. I'm in a place where as if they want me to compromise myself what is she she's speaking out and then Vindi and all of them you got this girl and go to the court to get some document that even the lawyers want to speak to her they gotta go through Nandalal I mean another Nandalal who is Nandalal by the fluke of imagination I hope he's happy because he spent a long time to hold something in his hands to call a child oh what about our children out there? What is going on in this country? Eh? And people calling me, don't call my phone. We, our young people are dying. And when election time, you come in to talk about young people who really care about young people, who care about girls. Yeah? You come for join the police force, everybody who wants sex them. They go in the army, everybody who wants sex them. You go for do medicine, like a tool. You go for do business. They got to compromise themselves. Eh? They got a vision. They got dreams. And you got these predators trafficking them, luring them to exploit them in your house. Eh? It's a shameful lesson. I am saying today, once this girl's story is truth, everybody that will listen to my voice, all the generation for these people who will compromise, course be them. I said, God sent plagues upon them, not like frogs. Plagues that they can't even see that will destroy their generation. This is hard. This is hard. And I'm not going to stop. I'm going to come out here. I don't know where's the novel. I don't know where's this hoobly doobly with this DPP. Oh, you got to read so long. Where's all of this? And I'm not intimidated because this thing they got black van, blue van, green van. This one the radio, this one the wacky tacky. I don't care how much tacky tacky they got. Why would tell Halloween the wacky tacky back up? Because you see, when I hurt and I come out there, eh? don't come wrong me funny. Don't come wrong me funny. I come here peacefully standing for justice. I come as a mother. I come as a woman. I come as a Guyanese. And I got a right to stand up. I got a right to pick it where I want. Ain't no bandit or no criminal. Right? I'm a law abiding citizen. And I'm one in shutting up. In shutting up. You understand? So I don't care if it's a CPP, EPP, or what I come today saying that the DPP don't play with it. So what is it? Don't play with it. You, you, you're reporting that uh, persons have reported to you that as against a very penitent Dharm Lali, he's more emboldened. He's more emboldened. And this idiot, if you know the idiot, you know he. I can say like Kali Kati. When you, you listen to this boy, this, this stupid, disrespectful idiot in the parliament, when you listen to Damlal, how we talk and how they address women. Listen, this is not nothing new to the entire cabinet. Nothing new. And things like this, he's showing off himself. Because he got some authority. But I got news to Damlal. I said, Damlal, day and night I call him upon my God. You understand? Day and night I call him upon my God. I said, Lord, you will judge Damlal. For all his sins. Now, before this night, don't forget, he's going to repent. 
judgment gonna be for them. I don't care when bully be. You think this is shame falling me? More shame gonna fall you. More shame gonna fall you. All back at them. And when I come up on this road, it's my mission. Let them leave me alone. Let them back up. Police, liar. Back up yourself. When you say come out here and, and turn it for me, young people. You tell me in Guyana, and as a Guyanese woman, I can't talk. Hmm? Racist office that I can't come and stand up on picket. This is a public office. One of the other questions I wanted to ask you, why do you think the women in the PUP government, especially those who hold senior positions, have been so reluctant? I think it's well established now that people would have, uh, have resigned from office for less accusations than this in other countries that hold um, what we espouse to be similar democratic values. Why do you think, especially the women in the PUP, have been so reluctant to... Uh, even off a neutral statement. These women don't care. They study the position and the job and the prestige. They don't care about this little girl, you know. I don't want to tell me nothing what you're saying behind. The mere fact you can't step forward, you got a choice. And let me tell you something, Sherrod. You and I got something in common. You believe in your Bible. It's one thing God gave me, you know, is that choice. You got a choice that you could choose. They choose not to. They choose not to. They compromise themselves because of the self. They're feeling good in position. But I tell you, and I can say it again, woe be unto the whole pack of them. Woe be unto them. Woe be unto them. This is a shameful government. Let me tell you something. I said before and I said again, I have not what not one drop of respect for your finale. Rubbish that. Rubbish that, Irfan. Rubbish. Rubbish. You could tell me, and you going on like if everything is fine. I want to fight with the DPP and a girl crying out and then they got some old statements but a little one the next one today I know if you see it and don't matter what people say it's what you feel because you temporarily got some power of this office they got to fall the DPP said um, I think as reported by Starbuck News that at the appropriate time you will know I mean that's one week two weeks three weeks it's four years. It's because, what do you make of that? Because Guyanese, we allow people to go into these public offices and say what they want. How are you going to tell me what's the appropriate time? How are you gonna, the police wrap up, they finish with from social protection, hand to the police. By two days, police hand to DPP. What's this appropriate time? Yeah? Next year? And the public is supposed to wait. And you start, you're not supposed to come to that barricade there. Because like, you're in prohibited zone. I a Guyanese. Right? And I in the zone, the bloom zone, because I is a guy in his. Any part of this country got a right to be and a right to stand up and to hear my voice. Thank you very much. Folks. That's just the opener, folks. That is just the opener. Say, boy, the bloom firing, firing out there. On the protest line today in front of the office of the director of public prosecution, Shalimar Ali. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ivlery, folks, Ivlery. You know, Simona said something there that I want to circle back to. And folks, coming up, just let me have, let me let you know. Don't go no place. Locked in, share the live, smash that emoji button. You can part with us too, so we can bring you more programs like these. You know, we talked to, we talked to uh, you heard from Nigel Hughes last night. Tonight, we're going to be talking to his wife. Yeah. Yeah. She talks about her reaction to him taking the case and her position on it. You're going to want to stay right there, locked and loaded. Your popcorn and your cooks. Good folks. Your popcorn and your cooks. Stay locked and loaded. Right? Don't go no place. Don't, don't go nowhere. If I miss something, send me you my guy a fried fish. My guy a chips. Stay, stay close by. We got a lot to cover this evening. But former Minister Simone Broom said something there. We want to circle back to. We're being made to understand through some mechanism of the court system for you to speak to the victim. You're going to go to an in law. That is what we're being made to understand. That's what's being alleged. You obtained something from the court. Some Rick Marole story. Marilyn, Marilyn, Marie. Father had a tree. And so if you're a lawyer representing the girl, you got to get the attorney general's approval. That's what we're being made to understand. That's what's being alleged. And on that protest line today, 
we met up at the one and only Lorley Nesta. We still in the opener, you know. We go, we go out for this. We still in the opener, and Lorley put things in perspective on this issue. Going through the AG to talk with the victim, if you're the attorney. What's happening here, folks? Activists, <laughs> politician in a road right. Lorley Nesta, only put this line today in front of the director of public prosecution's office in the Valeri. That's government control of the victim. That is wrong. That is wrong. So we have to determine whether we are living in a dictatorship or a democracy where the state controls who talk to who, who wear what, and who goes where. You know, sometimes we say it's creeping, but this, this is running dictatorship. And so if that was said, I did not hear that comment, but if that was said, I believe it's time for us to wake up. If the government, the state, can tell you who to talk to, we have some serious problems. I did not hear that. But if it is true, the AG needs to reconsider what he said. He needs to call it off. But I'm here to let the DPP know again. I was here yesterday. And I'm here to remind her that she is sitting too long on this case that has overwhelming evidence of wrongdoing. We know when the fire at Matthew took place, 20 young Amerindian children, Guyanese children, were brutally killed in a fire. I don't know that there was any comprehensive investigation, but a young lady, 15 year old, is sitting in prison. The DPP did not spend seven days or two weeks to institute charges against that young lady, 15 years old. But now we are here, and then there was the dorm fire where some young Amerindian children, boys this time, where the said DPP, we got one DPP, it's not three or four, it's one person, and these decisions are coming really nearly, you know. These little children, I mean, she did not sleep on it. These children were charged expeditiously. And now a sitting minister of government is charged with, is alleged, he's not charged, we're waiting on her to charge him, is alleged to have committed rape and sodomy against a child in this country. It has been seven days since we were told that the file is with the DPP and the DPP is sleeping on that. Seven days, the evidence is out there, the allegation is out there, and I'm saying the allegations are very solid. But if she spent less than two days to charge those little children for fires where we are still waiting for a commission of inquiry, we don't know that what they tell us is true. And guys, we have to stop accepting what people tell us is true, is true. We gotta investigate, we need to have empirical data we need facts but with everything out there we're still waiting for her to charge mr darum lal and so i want i would want to say you know the police fans there we see the scale and it look like justice but in this case and doing a comparison of the dorm fires and the swift charges that were instituted against those young amerindian children we're not sure whether or not the story they give us is true and the length of time she's sitting on this Daramlal allegation, it says to me <laughs> that justice in this country, you know, for some, it's there. For others, it's, justice is dispensed in an unequal fashion. And for me, none of us is above the law. The Constitution of Guyana says all of us, all of us must be subject to the law and no one is above the law. But I am saying... Based on how the DPP is handling, look at, we can do a comparison. I don't know that there was any big investigation in the dorm fires. We are calling for a commission of inquiry, but we have these children being charged. But we have a minister. So I am saying there is, for me, it appears that there is political interference in this matter. We don't want to say it, but it appears. So and if the DPP is acting fairly, she would try to ensure that this entire thing seems as if it is not political, but you know, when people are openly showing you that you know they might be taking some political directions, I mean, it's sad. We're never covering up the thing. 
And so it's a cause for concern. I am hoping that before this day ends, we will hear from the DPP. Yes. And we don't want to hear anything that doesn't make sense. For too long, we've been accepting things that didn't make sense. Mm -hmm. We want to hear that Mr. Darrell will have his day in court. We want to hear charges will be instituted because we can't come out here and say we want to hear from shit. We got to tell her what we have to hear based on the evidence before her. Okay? So we want to hear that the gentleman is charged. He must have his day in court. He must have his legal representation. And so he can, you know, try to defend himself. We want to see that. And I said yesterday, if it was any ordinary guy, and he said, this is where I'm showing you again, the unequal way in which the, the law is applied in this country. If it were a Sherrod Duncan, a Mr. Weeks, a police, a constable, a sergeant. Be dragged out there a long time. Any <laughs> other person who had no minister office or not affiliated to the government in any way. Yeah, that person cool. would not have been bailed because of the serious nature of the crime. And I believe somebody in Mr. Darum Lyle's case, for me, is a flight risk. So I'm not sure how bail was granted. Yeah. We had people like Akuma Gunsi and other people who sat in jail for 72 hours. This is a serious crime, but the man got bail. So right away for me, it was an equal application of justice there. Mm -hmm. There was no justice. The law was not applied equally. So when Mr. Um, Council Nigel used yesterday talk about the system must work. I am saying the system is not working for ordinary Guyanese in this country. It is not working because had this been just a regular person, that person would have been languaging in the lockups, waiting to go to have his day in court. He would have been marching from the lockups to the courts. But Mr. Darum Lal walked to the police station. I don't know if he went behind bars or anything, but he walked home hours after. So the victim, you know, sometimes I don't want to think about what this child went through and what she's continuing to go through because it makes me angry. No human being should be made to endure such just gruesome horror. And the thing that has really, really affected me, the person who is alleged to have committed the act is a lawmaker of this country. Mm. And we got to talk about the parliament piece. Mm. Because we ain't hearing nothing. We hear, we heard that the minister who's alleged to have committed this crime asked the president, so he's in charge of the president, asked the president of this country to send him on administratively. It is saying to guy, these y'all a bunch of fools. Mm. Because the minister's asking the president, you send me on leave administratively give me my perks give me my car give me my salary just let me stay home for a little bit that's staying home with pay that's what that is i don't know if that administrative leave can apply in his case as a political appointee of the president mm. and so all this it is so insulting to our intelligence as a people and these are the things that makes me mad because diana is filled with intelligent people and when they do these things in our face, it makes us look so in unintelligent. It makes us look coarse. And so these are the things that makes me so outraged. It's the utter disrespect for the intelligence of a decent, well-educated Guyanese people. And it is sad. So I am calling on the DPP. We don't want to hear filing come or not even sufficient evidence. You get it. We get it. The people get it. Charge the man and let him have his day in court. Folks, we're now getting warmed up. We're now getting warmed up. That was political activist, uh, Lorley Nestor, a uh, politician, former member of parliament, Lorley Nestor there, giving her views on the front line of the protest today in front of the director of public prosecution's office, Good folks coming up. You ain't gonna wanna go nowhere. You wanna share the life tonight. Smash that emoji button. Kathy Hughes, member of parliament, talks about her husband's involvement with this case. Nigel Hughes, he gave this comment yesterday to protesters outside of his office. And she weighs in tonight. Uh, she reacts to her husband accepting this case. The way she stands on the matter, folks, you, go, you, wanna, you wanna grab your popcorn and your cokes, you wanna grab your chips. And you and you and you bake and you fish. What are we having tonight for dinner? 
<laughs> strap, strap yourselves in, folks. Strap yourselves in. But I've been telling y'all, don't make your bike on the street, you know. You know, we're running up to Montel, celebrating a birthday at the end of the month on the 30th. And I know we get lots of happy birthdays every year. I'm, I'm grateful that thousands of you <laughs> say happy birthday across social media to the eye. But, folks, we want these programs to keep going forward, folks. We want to bring you continually valid and credible information. And so I'm saying for this birthday, send us a small piece to keep the program going. We're building house, we by fancy care. We're bringing you all valid and credible information. Night after night, program after program, week after week, and now year after year. November is going to be three years since we run the air, bringing you folks valid, credible information. Morning, noon, and night. Here is how you can help to partner with us and keep us moving forward. Want to keep getting the best in the ring? Right. Yes, you can help us to keep going by partnering with us through your contributions. And it's easy. Send us a daily, weekly, or monthly donation, whichever is most convenient to you. Cash app at dollar sign in the ring 592, Zell and PayPal in the ring 592 at gmail.com, or WhatsApp us on 627-6963 for how to contribute via MoneyGram and Western Union and for MMG payments. Want to keep getting the best? In the ring, Let's play. yes, you can help us to keep going by partnering with us through your contributions, and it's easy. Send us a daily, weekly, or monthly donation, whichever is most convenient to you. Cash app at dollar sign in the ring 592, Zell and PayPal in the ring 592 at gmail.com, or WhatsApp us on 627 6963 for how to contribute via MoneyGram and Western Union and for MMG Pay. We want to encourage you folks. We want to encourage you folks as well. If you're looking for a good justice of the peace, if you're looking for a good commission of votes, Traffy David, good folks. Look no further. Look no further, good folks. Look no further. Look no further. The Alistair Collins firm, they are experts in this area. You're looking for a good justice of the peace. Commissioner of votes, Traffy David, the Alistair Collins firm. Are you in need of reliable and professional assistance? With your important documents, again, look no further. The Alistair Collins from a renowned commissioner of old staff, David and Justice of the Peace, is here to serve you. Yep, conveniently located in by right by the Callion Mall, Lamaha Street between Camp and Waterloo Streets. Call them today. Go in today. You can reach him at 649 6410. 649 6410 with years of experience and commitment to excellence. Alistair Collins and his dedicated team. Are your go-to experts for all of your documentation needs. We use them all the time. We use them all the time. So we tell you folks what we know. Telling you folks what we know. But folks, we're just coming out of the opener. Opening appetite to what is to come. <laughs> Let's bring you guys up to date with some of what we're following. Where international news is concerned, folks. The Wagner Group has been sanctioned. Apologies there. The Wagner Group. You remember them? Was it Saturday? Was it Sunday? We saw them marching, huh? marching, folks, marching to Moscow. Yep, yep, yep. That coup was in full swing. Marching to Moscow. We following them. The U.S. has sanctioned them. The U.S. has sanctioned the group through these gold companies suspecting of, fun, of funding, rather. Wagner, sanction, sanction. And you remember Julian Sands, remarkable actor. He went missing five months ago. They found, he went hiking, didn't return. Some hikers stumbled on some remains that have been identified to be the, the British actor, Julian Sands. We thought you ought to know about that. That's happening internationally, folks. Back channels. Back channels. Our very own Professor Shamir Ali got the back channels for us this evening, folks. He got the back channels. <laughs> Fellow always fellow who always has his ears to the ground. He talks about a range of issues this evening, including Madden Fire, you know, including some issues in oil and gas, folks. The one and only Professor Shamir Ali, he got the back channels, ear to the ground. His hand on the pulse of what's happening internationally and even locally, folks. Back channels, Professor Shamir Ali. Take a look and take a listen. Sabrina Doris, <laughs> Sabo Williams, Eva Juna, Mario Bella, good to have all of you folks on the live tonight. Lyndon Gill, ask with shorts. Got it back channels, Professor Shamir Ali. Take a look.
Good evening, namaste, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. We continue to remember and offer our prayers for all those who are in distress and in sadness from Madia. Tomorrow in Kuwait and Qatar and the Middle East is Eid al-Adha. It's the time for the Feast of Sacrifice where every Muslim who can afford it should be in Mecca, Medina. Over 2,500 people. 2,500,000 Muslims are in Mount Arafat today, the day before Eid al-Adha. Ladies and gentlemen, we have so much of misinformation and it's very, very tough to keep up. But I thought I'll share with you the last LGE results. We've heard BP Jagdio boasting about the record success. Can we remember that Opposition leader Aubrey Norton deciding not to contest the election because of the bloated voted list. So it was not an even playing field. Truth is the truth. I'm sure opposition leader had pressures and he eventually agreed to have some participation. So to claim overall win is not true. If that is the case, let the election petition case go through and call the election. Simple, no rocket scientists. Ladies and gentlemen, my back channel as at minutes ago, there is trouble in Russia. President Putin after 23 years has seen another side of the fence. There is disruption, internet is disconnected, the media is blocked. And the Wagner Group, which he supported, his buddy, oligarch, with one billion U.S. dollars from Kuwait, from Russia, Putin, each year. So they're good buddies, but they fall out. My intelligence is he has lost image. Russians like the Wagner Group for what they did. So it is not all over. President Putin, with all due respect, is in sticky wicket. My back sources also tells me that big money were involved. All that we see in the news are not necessarily the truth. There are other factors are going on. So remember President Gorbachev. Can you remember what happened to him? There was a coup. And what happens? He fell. So that is part of the Russian history. It is a trial. The Wagner Group did a trial to see what the population of Russians, how they are feeling. And they have suffered, they've lost lives, and they are. So keep our eyes out. All is not well. It's also a lesson for Guyana. When we think everything is okay, one spark, this spark with Madia, can have changes for Guyana. Ladies and gentlemen, last Saturday, a book, Destiny to Prosperity from Honorable Raphael Trotman was released on mm -hmm. Amazon. I read all 187 pages cover to cover with notes and post-its on my sheet. My biggest takeaway I will share with you, page 29, confirms that the 2016 agreement was confirmed by the cabinet and minister was instructed to sign it. Sir Sridhar Ramphal represented both Guyana and Exxon. So when you hear all the beat up, this is in the book if you read it. Page 40, we hear about the $18 million, this and that. But the truth is, the governor of the Bank of Guyana got the $18 million, $18 million to help defend Guyana's case at the ICJ with $15 million. And $3 million was to help with skills development in the oil environment and in the gold industry. And it went to a U.S. Federal Reserve Bank. So how can the media and different spin doctors say 
that is hide slush money. It was not advertised because dealing with Venezuela, element of surprise. Nobody wanted, and I'm reliably told that Sir Sridhar Ramphal, who is respected by everybody, he was in and he was one of those who advised not to announce it. People can't tell a lot, you think, but this is what happened. And he's respected, and so it was not announced, so Venezuela will not know. Which politician in Guyana will want to do otherwise? With all due respect, there's none. Page 41 talks about a stability clause. Well, Minister Trotman didn't pick it out from his ear or his advisor or his book. This was used and give sent to him by GGMC, the experts with that area. And that was in the Andarco PSA and Exxon agreement. So it was a copy and paste. It was not something new thinking out of the box. So, you know, we need to be a little bit more diligent. Page 42, the agreement was signed and you hear who was there, whose family was there, who was not. The mm -hmm. truth is, it was signed in Texas. Again, Sir Sridhar Ramphal, among others, including the Guyana courts, Rashid Mohammed, he's a registrar to record all the facts. Number four, page 42, Minister Trotman did not act alone. Cabinet approved, mm -hmm. and weeks later, the senior minister of finance tabled in parliament. Ladies and gentlemen, my biggest surprise and shock was page 5, V, the missed opportunity for shared governance for all. And I need to read the words. What 99% of the Guyanese are aware or unaware of is in 2011, the election results December the 18th, the leaders of the PPP, APNU, and AFC met the very afternoon at the public building to discuss the way forward. At that meeting, Mr. Granger, you have to give credit where credit is due, Mr. Granger proposed to Mr. Donald Ramatar, mm -hmm. president-elect, that we should all come together and form a government of national unity rather than having a hung parliament. Mr. Ramatar, to his credit, did not reject the idea outrightly, but instead responded that it would be difficult at that stage to enter in such a government because his party, the PPP, neither campaigned nor sought or obtained a mandate for a national unity government. Ladies and gentlemen, the rest is history. And this is on page V. It's the truth, and the truth will set us free. My prayers and best wishes to you, your families, your children, your community, and Guyana. With God, Bhagwan, Allah, Buddha, Yahweh, Abraham, and Obatala. Be well. Blessings forever. Folks, Dr. Shamir Ali, Professor Shamir Ali with the back channel. A range of issues, I did tell you. Coming up, Kathy Hughes talks about her husband's involvement in the Nigel Darmlal rape scandal, folks. Damning allegations leveled against the Minister of Local Government and Regional Development. She talks about uh, her husband's uh, decision to uh, represent Mr. Damlal. She talked about her own position in the matter as well. You can watch it live for that good folks. Let's touch on a couple other things quickly before we circle back to what happened today. I will celebrate Director of Public Prosecution's Office with that protest around the region. The PNP said they're coming back. They said they're coming back and coming back stronger. You know, they've been doing some polls, such and so forth. And they said the polls indicate that they're regaining party support on the ground. Where it matters, we're happy for them on that front, folks. We are happy for them on that front. In Jamaica, still, 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 21 drinks later. Man was trying to consume 21 <laughs> cocktails of choice in Jamaica. Didn't end so well, good folks. It did not end so well. Don't do it. Don't do it. You know, you got a constitution for such things. Don't do it. Don't do it.
Moving on, folks. Win the five nine two yet? No, no, no. We in Trinidad. We closer to home. We closer to home, good folks. You know, we were talking last evening about the cricket match between the West Indies and the Netherlands. They lost in historic fashion. The West Indies tell it. Was it the Netherlands? It keeps slipping. There's a new hair greaser using folks from memory keeps slipping. Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago was the worst match he ever seen. The worst cricket match he ever seen in all his life. Yep, yep, yep. The worst cricket match he's ever seen in all his life. That's some what we're following at that end. Y'all know once we come to 5924. <laughs> we put all those things in between. The Nigel Damlan rape scandal saga allegations. So calm y'all down. There's some of y'all so right up. We want to see boots on the ground. Don't only stay right up on social media. Bring it on the ground. Bring that energy on the ground. Nine, the non-violent energy. Non-violence energy on the ground, folks. Bring it on the ground. We're in the 592. Y'all who wants me to touch here? The trouble. The depon it. The depon. Plenty. 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 You know, they tell us the movie vendors and pleasants. But once we put it out there, folks, and members of the public like you start pushing back, this is not the vendors and pleasants. They will not be disturbed. It's those doing the illegal vending on the roadside, illegal vending operations on the roadside, right? And those that are encroaching, it's not the vendors in Pleasant. They, they won't come wrong, Pleasant's funny. They said those persons have been issued with notices. We're still watching. We're still watching them. Why are you taking bread out of the people's mouth? Why is that? Hmm? Why so suddenly after local government election when people don't vote? You see the wickedness in them? Huh? From Bishop Raydon, back up yourself, Mr. Moon and Broom's wife. You see why you can't trust them? Huh? Oh my God to me, Lord. Well, they roll out, Joe Singh. They roll it out, folks. Folks, since they've grown up, Joe Singh big. Joe Singh got about 400 years old now. Not to take any of his accomplishments away from him. Huh? Oh, we ain't got nobody else. I thought them boys waiting so long to start this Madia probe, this Madia COI. They're bringing some international people like the black for the presidential COI on the elections. But we know the nonsense is the commuted up. One month plus, Joe Singh, they roll out. They said Joe Singh will be heading the COI, the probe, into the mad fire. Well, you know the girl mother is to be sworn as a PPP counselor. The young lady who they allege phone get take away and that's why she burned down the whole arm. And resulted in one of the most horrific national tragedies we've had. Uh, and all, all the time is all the PPP watch. Her mother, they're telling us, is to be sworn in as a PPP counselor shortly. Yeah, very interesting. But the rollout, Joe Singh. Joe Singh, stop taking rollout. Folks, the rollout, Joe Singh, they had the, um, the natural resource fund, a very important function. I thought that would be consuming all his time, all his time, making sure the money rolling right from the oil and gas industry, making sure it's spent right. But alas, He's taking some time off, apparently, to look at the Madia tragedy. Only the PPP. They got reports from the UN, got reports from the Ghana Fire Service, take down the grills, what we are doing in the dumps. They listen to none of that. But they roll out Joe Singh now, and he's taking roll out too to look at that. Oh, 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 oh. God damn it. Yep, some of what we're covering. Some of what we're covering, folks. Them boys. Jebusites, Hittites, Philistines, and Pharisees. Trench Crapos, the black belly sheep, the Brahman bull, the giant black chicken, whole animal farm. Jacobats and Trench Crapos are like, yep, y'all know them. Y'all know them. Whole animal farm. Wicked, stinking, dirty. Right back there. Right back to where we started, folks. Right back there. Well, the DPP run out. The DPP run out. She said, I'm not going to be intimidated. And a lot of people showing the stripes these days, you know. A lot of people showing the colors these days. I will not be intimidated by the opposition. It's not only the opposition for just this issue, Madam DPP. With all due respect, in my professor should be your voice. With all due respect, it's not only the opposition for just this matter. But you see how your views are? You understand how John is their views are? We saw a woman on the protest line that came all the way from SC Cable. We are there. Send me a right in the city. Can't see y'all. Can't see y'all. I see my friend running a little while. I ain't seen my friend Rondo from Hague Blanking Bird. You know, they from the land still. Yeah, but the DPP run out. She run out today. She will not be intimidated. 
She said, by the opposition, right? Due legal attention is being given to the case file. It's taking a little too long. And again, the great civil rights leader, Martin Luther King, Dr. the Honorable Martin Luther King, he said, justice, too long delayed, he said. It's justice denied. We saw some protesters out there. We saw some protesters out there. On the front line again, folks. This struggle, good or evil, uh, justice against injustice, folks. On the front line there. Some of you absent. You got to mark your name present. Take a look and take a listen. What they have to say on that issue. And coming up, Kathy Hughes and her husband's involved in the case. And where she stands. Where she stands. Coming up, coming up. But first, look some of the other things that occurred on the protest line today. Some of the other voices that were raised. Take a look, good folks. And take a listen. DPP, don't condone red. DPP, don't condone red. DPP, don't condone red. It is now seven days um, since this matter is engaging the attention of the Director of Public Prosecutions. Um, yesterday, myself and a few colleagues, we came out here in protestation and we called on the DPP to act swiftly. You know, you would recall that many other cases were similarly to what she has before her, um, went before her, and she acted expeditiously. So my concern as a woman, more so, um, a, an aunt and a mother to many, um, standing here in solidarity for that young woman speaks volume. For too long, those in authority, we allow them to get away with the wrong. But this particular wrong, this particular one, we will not allow Mr. Nigel Daramalal to escape. This is not his first action as reported before against young people, not even young women. In the National Assembly, this particular individual was disgraceful, disrespectful to female members of parliament in the National Assembly. And you know what transpired last year? When he referred to one of my colleagues, female that is on the opposition benches, um, she want a dildo. None of his female colleagues on the opposite side condemned him for such a statement. It was Sharon Duncan, who was not in the assembly at that time, but came into the assembly because many of us who were sitting there, we did not hear, is until Sharon came in. Then we realized what was said. We brought it to the attention of the Speaker of the National Assembly, and he failed to address that situation. What he did instead was to punish Mr. Sherrod Duncan for no wrong which was committed by him, but merely him standing in, in condemnation for his female um, members of parliament, what was said by Mr. Daram Lal. Look, I know this young lady is suffering tremendously. And I get, you know, mentally, psychologically, perhaps physically, after this whole ordeal. Um, I can only imagine what her parents are going through and what many other female people in this country are going through. But you know what? Many of them are afraid to come out like us. That is why we got to keep this momentum up. And we got to send a strong signal, whether to the government, if an Ali would have failed the women of this nation, him being a father and having a wife, he would have failed his wife as a woman and also his little boy, children coming up. And he would have failed all the other children in this country. And you know what? The silence of those female ministers in that government speaks volume. Why the silence? Why the silence? Is this a norm? in the People's Progressive Party Civic, where men can do as they like, say as they like to female, and you accept it as a norm, it is a wrong. It is a wrong. And I want to say to all Guyanese, do the moral thing. 
stand with us. Many Jack Deal is on record stating that this is politics. We are seeking to achieve political mileage. But I want to say to you, Mr. Bada Jack Deal, we are not out here seeking political mileage. This is all about morality. This is about a young girl whose, who's, I wouldn't even want to say demeanor, but whose um, by, body was actually violated, not by a human being, but by a beast or a human or a beast in a human form. And I want to say again, the time for all Guyana must act and we must act now. So me being out here this afternoon at the um, DPP's office is to remind her that she got to act expeditiously. The world is watching. Many are watching. Why the delay? Why the delay? So we are calling on her to act and act now. Justice must be served. Thank you. What has brought you out here on the protest line? The allegation of rape against Mr. Nigel Daramalal. I'm from Region 1, and rape and sexual abuse of our children in our area are too prevalent. And the allegation against Nigel Daramalal is too consistent. He must go and he must be prosecuted. The DPP needs to do what she did to Bisram. Use our powers in our office and have Mr. Nandalal, Mr. Um, Daramalal charge. Just the way she charged Bisram from quarantine, she should use our powers and don't be afraid. Do you have confidence that we will see that, that, that those charges are charged? As a Guyanese, I'm still confident because this is the land of my birth. And anything otherwise, I would want to leave here some mornings. I wake up and things that happen, you just feel like pack up and leave. All right. Thanks Thank very much. You're welcome. So you've come all the way from SK to tell us? Yes. I'm standing on behalf of the girl. I don't think she would lie on herself like that. And that's all I have to say. Okay. I don't think she would lie on herself and expose such such evil and dirty things about herself. She has to get married. She has a future. Would she do something like that? To what gain? What would she gain to lie about something like that? On herself, stain herself so badly out to the world. So that's all I have. You've come from very far to win the protest line here. Do you have yeah. any confidence that you that we'll see the appropriate charges laid before well, the I minister? trust God. God is in charge. God is in charge. Yes. Thanks very much. God is in charge. Thanks very much. <laughs> That's some of what went on, folks, in front of the DPP's office there. In Ivlery, she said she's not going to be intimidated. She ran out. She shot herself. She said she will not be intimidated. Yeah. Believe it or not. I can see some of them running out tomorrow. Oh, you caught your shark. <laughs> Fight me. Fight me. Talk about said trench report. She will not be intimidated, folks. You know who else run out? You know who else swim out? Hmm? You know who else swim out? And give you a hint. I'll give you a hint. Young boy. He swim out too. You know, on the sidelines is something. On the sidelines is something. He says he will respect the outcome of the probe. Someone report says. Of the independent investigation, it means something, another investigation coming after this into, into the Aramal. He said he will respect the outcome of the probe of the in, independent investigation. You run out. Eh? Is me or are you trying to dress little like Granger here? <laughs> ah! You know, let's copy everything, copy your projects and send this day on. That's how this day. He said he will respect the outcome. But we're watching that. We're watching that. You know, we're watching that for the day. Quick, fast, and hurry. A lot of them running out, hopping out, swimming out, flicking out. Plenty of them. All your boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big fancy. The, 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 the money they take for print the, ban the banner, they could feed three communities in this country. The amount of money they take to print a banner of that size, they could feed three communities in this country. Naomi Drucker. Private sector commission said, thanks to Sierra and Lynch. But look at the, um, at the, uh, the part, the um, the unbiased private sector is the text of one of its staunch members 
If it was not for this lady, we would today be three years into a hundred year old military di dictatorship. Like he forget 2015. He forget 2015. Back yourself up, Jerry. Back yourself up, Jerry. The stolen Venezuelan military helicopter still parked on your front lawn. Back yourself up, Jerry. Back yourself up. Back yourself up. The closer. <laughs> That's a program tonight, folks. <laughs> the closer. The closer. We didn't tell you. We didn't tell you. We didn't think when we started. Back yourself up, Sarah. Back yourself up, Jerry. Back yourself up, Nigel. Damn lal. Back yourself up. Today on the protest line. Today on the protest line. We saw Kathy Hughes, member of parliament, Kathy Hughes, and the chairman of the Alliance for Change. Incidentally, coincidentally, Kathy Hughes is married to Mr. Nigel Hughes, the attorney representing Nigel Damlal. We asked her a couple of questions, and of course, we had to ask her, you know, what are your thoughts? I mean, how do you, what's the word we use, guys? Which, how do you rationalize? You know, what's going down here? Folks, don't take my word for it. Back yourself up. You are sure live yet? Sharon Castle Edwards. You are Elias Alison Cortez. Alison Cortez. Back yourself up. There's a power couple, you know. I want you power couple. Juju. Right? I know lots of y'all last night said, oh, oh, the man handsome. He's always beautiful. He always had my and so on. But he went talking tonight. Back yourself up. <laughs> folks, folks. Kathy Hughes makes her position known. Uh, but her husband representing Nigel Damla on this matter. And her own position on it. Pack yourself up. Share the damn live. Smash that emoji button, good folks. And let me go down the road. Kathy Hughes, in her own words. Lots of folks have been asking, where is Kathy Hughes? They haven't been seeing you on the protest line. You're out here in front of the DPP's office today. Talk to us about your own feelings about this issue. Uh, thank you, Sherrod. You haven't seen me because I was out of the country and then I came down with that terrible flu. Um, I've wanted to be here today. I feel 100% better. I am out here. Um, like most women in Guyana, like most of Guyana, I am very disturbed about this situation. I'm very unhappy about this situation. It is absolutely painful that we were aware of this situation now almost two weeks ago and that young lady is still in her own prison really that's the part that i find most distressing i just checked with my colleague uh, mr ramjatan and as far as i know uh from him um not she has not been able to get the legal representation that she deserves even um, though the Child Care and Protection Agency says that she has not been denied. Well, this is the part that I think is so unacceptable. As carried by Starbuck News. And this is where Child Care and Protection Services has a responsibility to answer that question. You know, these are the institutions that we put our trust in to manage this very difficult situation, to be fair, to uh, protect the interests of that young lady. And uh, uh, to me... They need to step forward and clarify. I have been told that even the state um, attorney has not been presented to her as an option for her. If it is that the young lady wants an attorney to speak to, which I understand when she was writing her statement, she expressed that interest and up to now it has not been granted, then something is vitally wrong. Something is wrong if she has not been allowed this legal protection and the legal the services of a lawyer um, as she has requested and something is even worse if um, it is a case that the child care and protection services is not clarifying to the nation what is really going on we're not stupid people just let us know that she has been um, afforded all her rights um Sharon, the other thing that's worrying too is that, you know, again, just going from what's in the public domain, because none of these institutions are informing us and convincing us that they're handling it in an appropriate and correct manner. Um, we heard that her devices were taken, taken away, um, not only from her, but from her parents and her relatives. 
and that's a troubling uh, situation because it sounds as though she's in, in prison. She's not in her hometown. She doesn't have family and friends around. There's a rumor that her mother went back to, to the hometown. Um, you know, what is going on? How are we protecting this young lady? Are you surprised we haven't been getting periodical reports uh, from some aspect of the government, given the seriousness of this offense and who has been implicated in it? Are you surprised by that? I am not surprised. But Sharon, everywhere else in the world, you will see that the agencies have a responsibility. The institutions that are there to protect us in all these different areas have a responsibility to step forward and to explain what they're doing, to let us know that they have it under control and they are doing their best and the person is being um, looked after in the proper manner. We see, we're not stupid. Mm -hmm. You watch CNN, you watch any of the newscasts, NBC, ABC, they got a big situation. There's a flood. You see the officials in the town stepping forward, saying what they're doing, what is being done, who is being looked after. They are accountable to the people. Why can't we hear? And a press release that's very vague is not sufficient in this day and age. I'm sorry. Um, outside of those things you've already mentioned, is there anything in this process that has surprised you by the authorities or anything that you've heard or, you know? Well, you know what surprised me? That, and I don't mean to curse, I don't think bullshit is a curse, but that bullshit response where they say that Mr. Darmlal has asked to be re uh, removed from his duties, that is a total slap in the face of all like-minded and sane citizens. <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, the president had a right to stand up and say, I'm sorry, I demand, I demand that you step aside because you don't meet the measure of integrity, of decency that is required for the position of a minister, a member of parliament, or any ordinary gentleman. And this is where, you know, at the end of the day, of the day there comes a time when, as humans, we got to say enough is enough. This has nothing to do with politics. This is how we treat women. This is how we are treating a child. This is not the first time. There are other situations that have come to light. And we want to know that our children are protected in this society. Kathy, before I let you go, you've been, very, you've been one of those voices that have been sung in the alarm with the quality that we have had in the National Assembly um, uh, and, and, and how... Um, those on the government benches, especially male colleagues, a few in particular, have related to the female colleagues on the other side. Talk to us about that. Sherrod, you can vouch, and all my colleagues can vouch, for the fact that by the time I step into that chamber, Mr. Kwame McCoy starts shouting, cat, 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 and the most derogatory of uh, statements. As a woman, I am insulted that any man could stoop so low. Mr. Darmlal has had the same kind of approach, and we know that because we had a dildo incident, not rumor or speculation, the Hansards, the records of the parliament, the video recordings show what he said. And what's sad is that when you look at that recording, he didn't even immediately, having uttered those words, step forward and say, oh my goodness, I do apologize profusely. There was a long period of him continuing to speak when we were in total horror. Mm -hmm. As you know, you were the one that came charging into the, the uh, assembly saying, no, 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 this is unacceptable. You cannot treat women like this. So this has become the norm. The last sitting of parliament for the first time, I stood up and said to the speaker, Mr. Speaker, you have, we have a ruling in the parliament that we do not mention the name of individuals that are not sitting in the parliament to defend themselves. And when, as is the norm, Kwame was talking about Mr. Hughes, Nigel, 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 I stood up and said, I'm an independent woman. Have some respect for me. Do not mention my husband's name in the parliament. But I have sat quietly for nearly two years. Sherrod, I am very blessed that the men in my family have always big up our women, so to speak. 
the men in our family, my, fa my father, my uncles, everybody have pushed our, our, the women in our family to grow, to strive, to support in the most difficult of times. And I think if I have not had to subject myself to verbal abuse in my family, why should I go to the lowest of men in a parliament, the highest voice in the land, and be subjected to verbal abuse? It's not, it's unacceptable. And I've reported this to the speaker on several occasions. And this is not banter. This is not the, you know, the, the banter that we do. This is sexually laced verbal abuse. And it needs to stop. Kathy, I have to ask you a difficult question. Um, you've been, you, you, you're very passionate about what has happened um, and this heinous uh, crime, the allegations that have been made. Um, you did talk about your husband, his name being mentioned in National Assembly. Your husband is a partner, one of, I would say, the foremost law firm and probably the foremost lawyer in this country as well. Um, he has been called upon to represent Nigel Damlal, the, the alleged perpetrator in this issue. How do you rationalize for the Guyanese people your own passion against what has happened and your husband defending uh, the alleged perpetrator? Sherrod, I am not a lawyer. And I start off with um, making that very, very important distinction. Because whether you agree or not, a lawyer takes an oath. Nigel and I have been back and forth on this for many, many years. And after 30 years of marriage, I can say I understand and appreciate his position. I don't necessarily, I know that if it were me, I would not have taken it. Now, this is the position of Nigel, the lawyer. First of all, the first thing I, once I put aside the shock, and the disappointment in, in many respects, I recognize that he has been consistent all the time. Because every drug dealer that nobody wanted to defend, my husband has a reputation for defending. He defended the folks from Luziknan. And I remember thinking, oh my God, it's easier not to defend these people. Why do you have to defend these people? And he has always shared with me, it has nothing to do with what is easy. Sometimes we got to walk the long and hard road. And so he has defended the rapists, the drug dealer, the criminals that many people assumed were guilty before they were even tried. And the foundation of the law is everybody must be entitled to a fair trial. He has told me that he cannot, as a lawyer, begin to distinguish when somebody comes to his law firm, well, are they PPP, are they PNC, are they AFC, are they Portuguese, are they Indian, are they black, are they indigenous? Are we going to develop a policy that we, de we look at some or we don't look at others? In my own, he does not operate that way. And so who he comes to him, he feels his responsibility is to provide that defense. Having said all of that, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that the other side didn't come to him because I would have preferred him, if I'm being honest, to be defending the girl. And in a kind of a way, he probably would have been, would have preferred that. But for what it is, that is the way he operates. And he has been consistent in the last 30 years. He always likes to remind me that the folks with the Lusak, um, that were charged for the Lusaknan massacre, where we saw the most derogatory of statements against Nigel again, because he took that case, the jury, an independent jury, freed them. He shared with me last night uh, a WhatsApp message from someone that reminded that he was on the case with Bernard Corden in, Brazil, in uh, Grenada, 
where they had his um, hanging sentence commuted to life imprisonment. So I know personally of situations where a woman in a custody battle was framed and sat in the prison for 12 weeks until Niger was able to say, no, this was a setup and was able to go home to her children. So it don't always go the way it goes. The most important thing I think is that yesterday he spoke about the institutions and that is where I think we Guyanese fall down. We miss the point. Nigel should not be the issue in this situation. The issue is Nigel Darmlal, his behavior. The fact that the government does not want to fire him, fire him. The fact that we are not pushing for our institutions to step forward and say to us, how are you ensuring that this is not going to happen? We hear about them taking down the, um, the, the rails at some of the dormitories all over the country, but we haven't heard anything else about the Commission of Inquiry into that fire at Madia and all those lives that were lost, our children again. We haven't heard what they're going to do and maybe put in place. So when these in, um, um, officers and also ministers go into these Amerindian communities, what distance, what's the protocol going to be that we put more distance between these lecherous individuals, these lecherous men that should know better but are taking advantage of our children? That is what we should be looking at now. Not Niger who's doing his work. That is the work of a lawyer. Thank you very much, Kathy. Thank you so much. You're most welcome. You're most welcome. Want to keep getting the best in the ring? Right. Yes, you can help us to keep going by partnering with us through your contributions. And it's easy. Send us a daily, weekly, or monthly donation, whichever is most convenient to you. Cash app at dollar sign in the ring 592, Zell and PayPal in the ring 592 at gmail.com, or WhatsApp us on 6276963 for how to contribute via MoneyGram and Western Union and for MMG payments. Want to keep getting the best? In the ring. Uh, yes, you can help us to keep going by partnering with us through your contributions. And it's easy. Send us a daily, weekly, or monthly donation, whichever is most convenient to you. Cash app at dollar sign in the ring 592, Zell and PayPal in the ring 592 at gmail.com, or WhatsApp us on 6276963 for how to contribute via MoneyGram and Western Union and for MMG payments. You heard it here first, folks. You heard it here first. Kathy Hughes, in her own words, on the Nigel Damla rape scandal, uh, her husband taking the case, her own personal views, on the matter where she stands, folks. Valid, credible information. That's going to do it for us at this end. Thanks for joining our broadcast this evening. For your presence, good folks out there, made a difference around the world, 6,000 200 plus of you joining our broadcast tonight. That's our time and that's our program. You gotta watch. You gotta watch them. You gotta watch them folks. Stay vigilant out there. That being said, that's our time and that's our program. Stay safe. Stay safe. And thanks to all of you for joining. Diana Boudin, Ingrid King, Cecilia Joseph English, we see you. Rosetta Barton, we see you as well. Nicole Brandis Higgins, Bella Mona. Of Forbes Graves, good to have you. Valerie Clark, Yolanda Thomas, Marilyn, how are you doing? Samantha, uh, Yulina, Moses Clark, one person. Good to have you. I am Natasha Congraves. Partner with us, folks. We want to do more of these programs. Help us to stay on here. Help us to keep moving forward. Pace and power, boots on the ground. We're in back in the angle, folks. That's our time, unfortunately. And that's our program. Stay safe. Stay safe. Stay safe. Stay safe. That's our time. That's our program.